them off after. Hello and welcome. I'm Kylie Stone, your host on The Uncharted Leader and your coach in creating a new paradigm of leadership. Uh, brace yourself uh, because today is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm in, depending on what day you seem to catch me for these podcasts will determine uh, potentially your experience of how the, uh, how you uh, enjoy this podcast or not. Um, hopefully it is a yes. In fact, I do want to shout out today uh, to a lady who did send me a message on LinkedIn uh, saying that she's enjoying the podcast. Thank you. And if you are listening out there, please do send me a message on LinkedIn. I want you to know that I do read them and I'm very grateful because for the most part, when we don't hear or get feedback from people who do listen, you know, we're in our own heads about it. And I don't know about you, but certainly you do not want to take a good look behind the closed door of my thoughts because they most of the time are pretty scattered. Um, so I would welcome any of your comments, feedback. What do you like? What would you like to see more of? Um, who would you like me to talk to? Maybe you know someone who's got a really great story that I should talk to. Maybe I should talk to you. Please do reach out. LinkedIn's the easiest place to connect with me. Now, I say uh, brace yourself for this one. And I even, depending on what time of day it is for you, I recommend, you know, grabbing yourself a herbal tea, I don't know, a cup of coffee if it's the morning. Um, I don't know, maybe it's champagne or beer o'clock for you, what, whatever that is. But sit back, enjoy. Um, I have no idea what to expect on this one. I really do not. I'm really going with the flow on this one. And that's why I say I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, because today I'm speaking with Angela Phillip. And I hope I've, is that pronouncing it? Is it Phillip? Did I get the surname right? It's actually Philp. But um, I'm okay with Philip. In, in France, everyone says Philippe and they get very really confused. So everything's good. Philip, flip. Okay, see, now, see, now most people would go, oh, damn podcaster, she should at least speak to her guest to get the name right before she starts. <laughs> so I got, I, I got that. And uh, so Angela is somebody that I have met online some months ago. I'm pretty sure it was maybe even a year ago probably even a bit long I'm sure she'll correct me anyway um connected through a person that I've known for men for, for for years decades um and then we reconnected again uh in a Facebook group or on Facebook and then actively connecting on in a conversation around you know a united passion that we have for women um and I have been myself inspired uh, by Angela, what you put out on social media and your passion and the work that you do with women. And that's about um, all I've got for the intro, because today I am going to suggest that the, the real nature and the, the uh, intent of this for you as listeners is really going to be about really being uncharted. You know, what does it look like for you to just not have to have anything in control anything handled or to have any firm plan on what you're going to do to show up and to just really enjoy enjoy that for what it's worth. So Angela, I um, given that we're going to do that, um, I'm actually going to ask you to introduce yourself. Um, tell us about, you know, what it is that you are passionate about and, you know, what you do to fill your day. <laughs> Oh my God, that's awesome. And I just love what you, um, I love what you just said about sitting with the unknown. I've lost you. Hang on, come back. There you are. Um, about really sitting with the unknown and, um, and really being uncharted because we spend so much time trying to control everything and particularly, well, I, I think men do this too, but women, the women I work with, get it right. And I know I'm very much as well about getting it right getting it perfect and, and then standing there drawing at the whiteboard and to, you know, waiting until the conditions are right, waiting until everything is right before I get it out there. And, you know, this morning before our Zoom call, I thought, oh my goodness, I want to make sure I make an impression, you know, like, you know, this is Kylie's podcast. I've got some, um, you know, like a, a duty to her as well to make sure that this comes off in a particular way and when you just said look let's let's riff let's talk and I went yeah yeah that that's it and um and this is what I'm really interested in is conversations with women really getting deep into what is 
without all the prepar well without not so much without the preparation, but without all of the having to get it right preparation. There's preparation which is, you know, I'm a I'm a leader, I'm responsible, I want to have something there that will be of service. And then there's the preparation that's like deer in the headlights. <laughs> I've got to, I've got to get it right. And so um this reminds me of a conversation I had last night with another amazing coach in Canada and we were talking about leadership and just, you know, she said, why did you want to talk to me? And I went, I want to find out who you are, how you work. This is so important. We have such a role as coaches. Um, coaching to me is a, a form of leadership and we have a role um, to and a responsibility to help women bring out the best in themselves. And what is I'm really passionate about is having women in 50% of leadership positions worldwide, like you reinventing the leadership leadership paradigm completely. And I think I might have said to you not to be inclusive, but to actually redefine the leadership paradigm. There's nothing to be inclusive about when it's redefined because everything is in it. <laughs> so when I hear about it, I'm you know, redefining the paradigm for it to be inclusive, I keep thinking that means us fitting in. That means every minority fitting in. That means women fitting in. It's like, no, no, no. It needs to be redefined. Mm -hmm. So that's my passion. Yeah, um, and I do that through working with women. Yeah. Fantastic. I do want to um, ask a bit about your backstory and how you got into this. And before you do that, given that, um, you know, we've got a very mixed audience, one of the things I just want to mention at this point, um, it, especially on what you just were saying then about inclusive, uh, every human being, male or female, you know, age, independent of age, race, etc. Uh, what, what we do know when the, in, in the way that the brain works is there is one fundamental belief or decision that tends to uh, hit everyone, whether you're a male or female, um, and maybe it's just that most women tend to speak it more often, but, you know, the concern that we don't belong, you know, I the, the story that gets created when we're very young and that first experience where we have a sense of disconnect with uh, where we belong in the world and one of the things that, uh, you know, that I get concerned about when we talk about inclusiveness in leadership is that um, how does one ever, even if you have everything perfect, given that we're talking about perfection, even if you have everything perfect, right, and everyone's doing everything according to the book when it comes to inclusiveness, right, that if human beings are the ones who decide I don't belong, how are you ever going to ultimately deal with the high proportion of people ever having the experience of being included if who they are is a conversation called I don't belong? Absolutely. I really get that. And what I hear about that is it is it's an internal um, conversation we've created for ourselves. And so that's part of the, I think the education of it, isn't it, is, is realizing that. And then becoming, I belong because I belong in myself. And so I take my place. Mm. What that I create, I don't take my place. I create my place as the way I see it. Mm. And then that in itself starts um, setting off that chain reaction of we all belong. But, you, we, but you're right, um, Kylie. What I hear in that is that we have to change our inner conversation always first. Mm. And, that's, and I guess that's our role, helping people change their inner conversation, which changes the exterior outside conversation. It's always an inside out job. Mm, yeah, great. So how do we do talk that? about your story. So can you, can, oh. can you, how did you get into this game of being a coach and how, how long has that been going? And Wow, that is an interesting, that's an interesting, um, uh, you know, I could almost say I got into the game when I was really young. Um, you know, I was born in New Zealand, grew up in Australia, and but I came to France because I wanted to work for UNESCO in women's education. And that, um, trying to apply to, the, um, to get into UNESCO from New Zealand at the young age of 21 or 22 was just like, you know, thank you, young lady, that's really nice, but you have no experience. And I thought, oh, this isn't working. So I thought, I have to get to France. So I found a job in France. And I had been an exchange student, so I'd, I'd learned to speak French when I was um, 18. But I thought, right, I just have to get there. So I ended up getting a job, meeting somebody within that those two weeks, like completely, what to learn English, like just by accident. I'm, there are no accidents, but I met someone who was working at UNESCO, and she went, oh, you need 
to meet my boss. I went, great. And then I had a job, basically. So the, the minute I started um, putting the ball in motion for myself, moved, found the job, moved to France. Um, you might get a message saying my internet connection is unstable. I live in a little country house in um, <laughs> the middle of nowhere <laughs> so, <laughs> and do this amazing work. So, that, so, so that's where it started. So I was working with women. Um, I was actually working um, writing programs education programs for women and girls in developing countries and I just couldn't get over the fact that we were actually putting together programs to sensitize men as to why women and girls should be educated why that was important and and these programs are still not necessarily mine but you know newly developed ones are still going on 25 years later there are still sensitization programs as to why women and girls should be educated half of the population worldwide that just you know, it doesn't connect for me it doesn't make sense it does I mean I get it but I also don't get it and then from there we moved to Toulouse from Paris and you know I married and had three children and thought right I don't know if I want to work for a big organization anymore I think I want to do something different I want to help women in developing countries with confidence and so I I you probably see my little piece of artwork up there I I studied calligraphy for um, eight years and started working with words. And I thought, well, what are the words that we use to speak to ourselves? And, you know, maybe I can run some workshops. So I'm really going to cut a long story short, but moved, I didn't move, went to India, went and saw some NGOs in Dharamsala and went, I would love to work with Tibetan women and Indian women and really helping to create um, a feeling of real self-confidence and self-esteem. And they went fabulous. And then, Sort of my my marriage went a bit haywire, and I thought well, maybe it's not now is not the time to be moving backwards and forwards between countries. And somebody said, "Couldn't you do those with us, those workshops?" And I went, oh, "I'd never even dawned on me that you know, Western women might have a, a need for confidence. I just assumed that everyone had it." And so <laughs> there you go. And so I started my workshops, and then from there really went into you know, went into coaching and leadership and training from there. Um, and also I've been an adventure racer. So I, I've done, you know, long distance races that are between, well, anything between 90 kilometers and 600 kilometers long, nonstop, 24 hours, um, backpack on the back, but anything between horse riding, 120 kilometer kayak, 200 kilometer mountain bike, glacier travel abseiling the whole lot and so uh, you know I've worked a lot with resilience not not that I've studied it but it's just been part of what I've done mm. and so I sort of brought that into it as well and so I've been really working with leadership and resilience and um, you know redefining a little bit what resilience is as well because what I learned about resilience was you just get up and keep going you just get up and keep going mm. and I'd like to bring a new definition to that there's a bit more discernment I think to bring into it and so so there you go or it's all been a bit of a mishmash mm. and it's also been it's been uncharted it's been uncharted Kylie it really has it's been that uh oh, just really following that inner voice like I really want to do that and then going for it mm. and then I don't know why I want to do that but I do and then well what other skills can I bring in I'd like to bring this in okay well what happens if I make that and then and now it's becoming okay no I really see women in 50% leadership positions world right so everything I do feeds into that mm -hmm. so I do have I do have one question for you actually about the leadership side in particular because um, you've mentioned it a few times about doing work in the area of women in leadership uh, or women with and leadership. So when you when you say that, what does that actually look like for you with the work that you're doing? Um, so it's interesting. So we met through somebody who um, who, who, we, who we, you know you, you've done a lot of landmark work, and I hadn't done any. And um, just what I so this wonderful person that we both know, we met at a fabulous leadership training um, forum called Being a Leader in, oh, yes. in, in, ah, yeah, in 2019. Yes. So you did that, did you? Yeah, that yeah. was the most amazing training I have ever done in my whole life. Yes. It, you know, it changed my life. It impacted everything. Yes. And because I believe, so what was it? 
to answer your question, let me see if I can answer your question. Well, I let, never actually, you said, ha, yeah. So let, given that you said that, right, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, that in itself says a lot already about where you're coming with with leadership right so we're not talking about mm. a education or a structure or a role or there's the so given that you said the being of a leader is the work you're doing in the area of being a leader mm. is that so it's not it's not that you're working with people who are in leadership positions Absolutely. or that, that might be the case is it predominantly about the the being of a leader for you Yes, it is. Okay, right. It is. It is very much about the being a leader. And um, most of the women I work with are in leadership positions, but that's not what's most important in terms of it's not about some sort of hierarchy. Yeah. Um, it is about the being of leader. And I really believe that we need to take that as a position in our own lives. And I think that when more women step into the being of leader in their own lives, then we will transform the paradigm. So it's not all about, oh, I'm an executive coach and I only work with executives. Not at all. Um, I love working with executive women because they're in positions of leadership and they have maybe a, um, a reach. Uh, and, and they can have an impact and a reach that is, you know, like immediately visible. But I also really believe we should, or that it's possible, and that's where I'm also looking at, is transforming leadership from the ground up. So what is important to me is putting leadership programs into, uh, into schools, for example, and recreating what leadership is. What is the being of leader as we grow in young girls mm -hmm. and boys? Um, but my, my, my passion is working with young girls. Okay. So as we grow, what happens if we change, you know, if we know what the being of leader is, how we show up in the world, how we own, how we create that sense of belonging, what it means to us to, to lead others. And, you know, last night I was talking with this amazing woman, um, um, and we were talking about the seven generation thinking that it's not just about, oh, hey, I've reached a position now. That's not to me what leadership is. I've reached a position and I stay in this wonderful hierarchical paradigm <laughs> where finally I've made it and I'll just do the best I can here. No, <laughs> it's about how are you going to use that leadership knowing that you are standing on the shoulders of seven generations before you and that is reaching out into seven generations ahead. And, and to take that on then as a responsibility and really look at impact. How am I being and what am I transforming? So that's how it, that's how it shows up for me. Yeah. That's so great. I, I was talking with Karen Finch last week. Karen uh, runs an organisation called Legally Yours. And this very, a very similar thing came up from, you know, both, uh, you know, and it's not everyone that's kind of subscribed into this particular So It just seem, seems coincidental that both her and the, you and I are talking about this same thing, but that, that traditional, that the reason that we're at this new paradigm is because the journey of, you know, exiting out of a study, uh, getting into a job, getting a promotion, it, more more hard work, more promotion, and climbing and climbing, and then X amount, and then eventually going, oh, I finally made it. Well, that was the that was the crisis for me, by the way. Um, but I said to her, isn't the funny thing was I found myself reading a book called. Um, have, you, have you ever read any of Robin Sharma's work? Is I have. It's been a while though. I, I've been reading Tracy Goss again. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, 2010, I think it was. And I, I don't even know. I might have been listening to a pod, podcast, I think what they were about, um, a meditation. And, and uh, the book was called The Leader With No Title or The Leader Without a Title. It was the very first book mm -hmm. I read after I had the kids and was challenged with, okay, can't keep going down that path with three kids. And I had to find an alternative way. But um, it's, you're spot on. And, I, and I, I suspect that that's exactly why we're at this juncture because we are at a juncture i really believe we're at a juncture and you know those organizations that are not who are still very much designed around that uh hierarchy are going to have find it more difficult than those that are just starting out from scratch because it's easier from scratch to create um but uh it, it it is required because you know there's a lot of constraints as you can as you well know that you know the being of a leader is a very distinct thing and you, you can have a title right but just because you've got a role or a title or 20 years experience doesn't necessarily mean that you're showing up as as a leader right yeah 
Exactly. I really get that, Kylie. And I, I, I have that deep inner knowing as well and sense that we're at a juncture too. And again, it's so interesting that you said at the beginning of the podcast, let's just do this uncharted and riff. And I went, and, and it's all to be created. And I really get what you just said as well about it. It is easier when you have a blank. It's interesting because we talk about the blank pages being hard to create with and it's all there to create. There's nothing to undo. Yes. Well, yes. Um, yes. And there's a, there's a, you know, there's a lot of, yeah. Keep going. That was great. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> yeah. you're right. And it's um, so I just, Sorry, sorry, I, I think we've got a bit of a delay there, but that's, I, I just capture on that blankness that you were saying. It's interesting because, you know, on one level we think uh, blank canvas harder to create from, but the truth is, especially in the design of human being, when it comes to creating something, if we've got a whole lot of stuff filling up the space, called all of our opinions and judgments and assessments, it's like, in fact, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when you know when you you get a really fed up. I don't know if you've had this experience, but when you get when you're in a job and you no longer like the job, right? For whatever reason, right? Whether you know you don't feel like you're getting traction in what you're doing, you're not getting a promotion, the people you work with, for whatever reason, culture, whatever the reason, right? But you decide I'm out. I'm going to go start a new job, right? You get into the new job. Oh, it's just wonderful again for the first three months, right? Oh, shit, it's the same experience again and blah, 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 right? That's the same stuff called, oh, hold on. What's actually occurring is when you get into the new job, all that's happening is you're starting with a blank canvas. And then you're going to fill the blank canvas up again and you're going to create it with a whole stuff of stuff. And the only reason you're having any problem is because you filled the bloody thing up with all the stuff again. <laughs> Yeah, and if you have, you filled it up with all the stuff and you filled it up with all the same assumptions because wherever you go, there you are. That's so right. if, you haven't worked, if you haven't worked on any of your assumptions, then you are likely to create the same thing. That's so, right. And then wonder why it's different, why it's not different. <laughs> it's just, yeah. yeah. So, and that really reminds me of sitting with the unknown for me is actually really being in the unknown. And not trying to get it right, and not to, which is what we're talking about for, and not trying to fill it, mm -hmm. allowing what is there in the moment to really come up. And um, and so funny, I was thinking about that yesterday because as I sent out my newsletter, and then I thought, right, I'm sitting here, I'm going, trying to write, trying to write, and all of these thoughts are in my head. And I went, mean, you don't get any of your best ideas when you are sitting there trying to conform. Go outside and walk around. And it, I mean, I just get up and walk, and then the ideas come, and it's like let something come stop forcing it and and I and this what where this links to what you were saying is that there's this my head is already full and I'm going to try and get something out of it I'm going to squeeze something out of it rather than I actually have wisdom and knowledge and all I've got to do is quiet myself down to to let it come and that to me is what recreating leadership is about as well. I mean, we, we are living, I know we always say the VUCA world and I get a bit annoyed at, well, a bit annoyed. I get a bit jaded about terms, but it's true. It is always uncertain. I don't know if it was ever really any less uncertain before. I don't think we ever knew what was going to happen next, but there was at least an idea we had certainty. Well, now we know we don't have the idea that there's certainty. Hmm. So there's a certain amount of um, surrender to the, the unknown that I think is, is an important part of leadership now as well. None of that I know. I already know. It's what can I find out? Asking more questions um, and standing in the power of that rather than standing in or trying to create power with, I know this. I've got all this in my head already. Knowledge rather than, you know, transforming with wisdom, you know. Yeah, that's great. You now, I, I'm really curious, actually, now that we're in this conversation about uh, uh, where the attention goes, you know, you, you bring up a great point. I think one of the biggest obstacles is getting stuck in, I know, or looking for what do I know here, so that then we're trying to respond from knowing, you know, because that kind of gives us a yeah. sense of validation from other people. You know, I imagine if you know, anyone sitting around a meeting, for example, or in a boardroom or for whatever purposes you're in some group and you're out to create something, then the biggest obstacle is when you're jarring up against, oh, I, I know this and I, you know, there's no discovery in that, right? Um, 
And I, I, I think this is probably why I'm starting to find that my passion over the last six months in particular has shifted from working on leadership development. You know, like I kind of got categorized into leadership development because I use the word leadership, but that's not mm. where I where I play, right? I mean, I, I play in building brands and leaders are people who build extraordinary brands. You know, they're people who create extraordinary movements. And so for me, it's always been about that. But just as you were saying, I, I just got really clear about why. And it's because I think if you imagine sitting around a table with a group of people, right? And if you've got something that you're at work on, right? If you're talking about a company, for example, you know, if let's just imagine it's Apple, but if you're all sitting around the, the table and you're talking about Apple and you're talking about the invention of the latest computer, there's no fight for what you know, right? You're all kind of just exploring what the future is for this creation and how it's going to impact people and how we could do this. And everyone's kind of throwing their ideas around. There's no fight with each other about that. You know, it's not all how I'm doing versus how you're doing. No, you know, and it's just yeah. take the attention off self, focus the attention on what you're creating and allow people to be themselves, listen and think rather than, you know, anyway, what do you, what do you, what do you uh, think? Because you, because you're, because you too, right? You say you've been in the game of Unchained is being a leader. What, what do you see for yourself about what shows up for people um, that that's working. Actually, just what you said. That I think there's that it's creating from the future is what is what works, because otherwise we're always dragging the past behind us. And um, I just I just love what you said. When we're creating from the future, we're not proving what we already know. I mean, let's face it. When we we all know stuff, especially I mean, I'm 51 this year. We, we've gotten to the stage where, you know, when, you, when you're at our, our or my age, yes, you, there's a whole lot of stuff you, <laughs> there's a whole lot of stuff you know, but there's no transformation in that really. And there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing dynamic. It's already there. And so when you are creating from the future, when you are starting to activate your human imagination, which is just unlimited, and you start really connecting with, well, what would be possible? You know, what, what do I not even know is possible, but what do we want? Like, what is it, this thing that we're creating? And you stop having this ego fight about, I want my idea to be the right one, or I already know this. And so we have to have this. Then you can really benefit from the lush diversity of everything that everyone brings. And we're creating, um, with um, another um, uh, person who's done the uh, Being a Leader course several times, um, some really uh, interesting work in, in, in Africa. And what I'm loving is we have different people from all around the world working on this. And of course, there are moments, I wouldn't say of friction, but everyone has different um, needs. And what's happening now is this oh my gosh, but this is what we're creating. And so this is what's showing up in a space. And rather than it being conflict, it's like, oh, how can we bring this in and use that? Like, how can we bring this aspect of what this person is saying? I hadn't even seen it like that, you know, because I'm only looking at whatever I'm looking at from, I've got this bottle here. I can only see this side of my bottle. They can see that side. And it's like, you know, that story of the, I might be diverging a bit here, but you know, the, 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 Malvoyant, we say in French, um, but you know the the. I'm going to say this is it's politically not correct, but I don't even know how to speak English anymore. You yes. know the blind man and the elephant. When everyone is touching, when each one is touching one part of the elephant, saying this is what an elephant looks like. Oh, yes. So if we already imagine it, instead of saying, well, this is what an elephant already is, but we say, I, w I wonder what this could be that we're creating, and recognize that we don't have the whole answer. Yes. And that's when that's to me also leadership is co-creating it's not just having the helmet of something although it is about leading other people but it's about being able to co-lead co-lead to generate new solutions mm -hmm. rather than working from what i already know and what worked in the past mm -hmm. yeah love that love that love that so i i, I am going to now give you a chance um uh given that you did say that you were doing some thinking about what you wanted to talk about when you came on here because you wanted to make it really great uh i'm going to give you the chance to do that right because um i i think you, you many of us would agree that you know if you've ever 
delivered a, a keynote or if you've ever been interviewed or if you've ever been in a job interview, if you've ever had that experience where you leave or you've done and then you look back and you go, God, I wish I had said this. <laughs> oh, damn, I forgot to say that. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to happen as soon as I get off. Even I though you, know. even though you, say, even though you say, Anne, you should, you know, like take the lead now or whatever it might be. I will still get off and go. Why didn't I say this and why didn't I say that? And I could have said it and I wish I had have said that because such is the nature of the moment, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do want to at least give you the opportunity to create or share with us uh you know i mean the, the design of the conversation and that which i've sent through to people who join me is really designed to share and and highlight that ultimately for me and this whole conversation around leadership um the conversation is specifically designed to talk about things around you know the creation of a future called one's vision uh what what is one passionate about and how do they bring that into their work uh, what is their purpose? You know, what has been your greatest accomplishment? You know, the, the thing that is really great that I think in the new paradigm of leadership, Angela, is the distinction of acknowledgement um, and being somebody who can be a role model uh, where there's no shame in sharing about one's accomplishments and there's no fight over accomplishments. Therefore, everybody has the freedom to uh, share authentically and openly without judgment about their accomplishments and equally about being real about what it's like in the in the thick of the challenges, you know, the biggest obstacles. And so I've just kind of hit bullet pointed points around all the things that are on the typical agenda. Um, so what out of any of that is is something that you would like to share with us? Yeah, I love that you're talking about accomplishments because I, that's one of the points I really work on with, um, you know, the women I, I coach, all women. And that's come out even more in recent training and supervision that I've had, just how important accomplishment is, especially in, uh, not accomplishment, it's acknowledgement is, in fact, of accomplishment and of who we are, um, who we're being and how we show up and what is working. Um, so, and what's so interesting is I'm often so focused on everybody else's accomplishment and acknowledging them for their accomplishment that I literally, literally forget my own. Now, that's like, yes, <laughs> right. Like, I, so I, I am going to be really honest. I'm sitting here like a deer in the headlights and going, what have I done? What have I done? I don't <laughs> even remember. There's always this, <laughs> this forward my mind's always and, and this is what I pull my clients up on it's like come back come back come back we're always in forward movement yeah. own what your accomplishments are um so well, I can, I give you, can I give you one of mine to start from today I would love you to give me one of yours tell me oh, one of yours. I, I, you know one of the ones that, oh actually no I did do it I was actually going to say I didn't make my bed <laughs> That is an accomplishment. I guess what I did make mine, <laughs> but that's that's an accomplishment for me. <laughs> oh well, yeah, yeah. See, I, you know, it is a miracle for me to not have to do to actually decide that I was going to do a couple of because I was doing a couple of interviews today, and of course, you know, well, I've now got these fancy virtual backgrounds that one of my guests has shown me how to use. So, uh, but typically when I do this, because it's you know COVID and you know I've got my bedroom and you know it's, I'm. I'm make sure that it's pristine right um and so today i i've been in this new place for myself and i'm doing a daily journal on my accomplishments and my forgiveness right and so i have been rig rigorous in making sure the beds the very first thing i do is make my bed and so the this morning i thought i'm really gonna own my none of that matters right i'm not gonna make the bed so i was like you know what on my accomplishments list tonight guess what goes on the top of the list not making my edge <laughs> and I, I i love that i lo i love that and i think um I, so if we look at and that's that's the other thing i think is often we look at accomplishment and i'm the first one as big things and that's what stops us and um, making the acknowledgement of the progress that we make every day and that is an, is the, probably the most important thing to acknowledge more than anything progress over end goal because 
Um, you know, what I'm passionate about is, is, is what you were talking about as well, is that really being real, not cultivating an image. And um, so when, and what I love as well is putting women together or bringing, gathering women, gathering women together um, and breaking these silos because there is so much, you know, I was talking about it before, there's so much, um, it's like a, a rich, lush forest of wisdom. And when we, when we bring women and men, um, but I love working with women, when we bring women together and we bring, um, you know, women who have accomplished what, you know, that traditionally we would say are amazing, amazing, amazing positions, amazing things in the world with women who were telling themselves, I've not accomplished anything other than, you know, bring up three children and have an idea and, and have a, you know, a, a small project that I bring into the world or my art that I've put into the world. And when we, when we um, gather different nationalities and, and different ethnicities and all of this in one room, this is what I'm passionate about and seeing what we can co-create from there and, and moving these, um, ideas that accomplishment has to look a particular way and getting back into this is who I am as a human and this is what I'm bringing into the world and maybe together as part of that rich tapestry or part of, part of that lush forest we can really create something where humans can feel nourished and that the earth can feel nourished as well and so coming back to you and your accomplishments um, an accomplishment to me <laughs> would be really actually having a cooking a really cool dinner for my kids. <laughs> Funnily enough. But also I, I really get where you're at as well. Um journaling every day is mm. um is to get to know who I am, what my thoughts are, rather than um be in the world finding out what every not finding out what everyone else is doing from a place of curiosity. I think it is beautiful to listen into what else is out there, but there's so much I can only identify who I am through everybody else that taking that time in the morning to sit, which is what I do every morning as well. I resist the urge to bound out of bed and get straight into work and start writing at this. This is important. What do I think? What is, what is my day? How will I create my day? My day is there to be created. It's not something that happens to me. So, um, and putting all that down as well is so important. And other, I'm, I'll have to, you'll have to prompt me on accomplishments. There's so much, there's so much that's been well, you accomplished. Know, you're welcome to pop them in as you can. But I, I think we might, uh, yeah. you know, really uh, want you to have the experience that uh, you did get to share and create the thing that yeah. you have created in the world. So, um, I, I will just, um, as you think about what that might be for you, I, I will use this space to say, you mentioned resilience at the beginning and how you're seeing that there's a need for new resilience. So I, I do, I don't know if it's short, I'm not sure if all you guys out there re remember, but uh, I am certified in the neuroscience of resilience, which does prescribe a new definition of resilience, which is around advancing despite adversity so it's, it's about bouncing mm. forward it's not about bouncing back but there are six different uh domains well science-backed domains that actually have been proven to directly increase and build and develop resilience um which is directly linked to well-being peak performance and um, productivity thriving and, and all those things and you know, sometimes I think, oh, is resilience the right word? But, you know, when you get into it, 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 it kind of is the right word. And the, the very first step um, that we've discovered is that the it's about undoing the definition or the interpretation you already have about resilience. Because mm. for most of us, especially our generation, Angela, you know, we were raised in uh, to believe that resilience really was just pick yourself up and get on with shit, right? But that's a yep. phys that's a physical thing. That's not a that doesn't that doesn't explain what happens in the brain wiring when that happens because the brain doesn't immediately you know rewire to normal. It makes certain decisions about ourselves. It makes decisions about others. And whilst it looks like on the surface we're resilient because we're tenacious or we're determined or we're persistent or we don't give up. That's not to say that we're completely resilient because if you, you know, 
a case in point, and, and I bring this one in particular up in the context of acknowledgement, because when I first, you know, one of the things that I'm passionate about, your access to being a leader, you have to be somebody who's able to take care of your well-being and your resilience, specifically your health. So if I have a crisis, which I did, and then my way of bouncing back is to cope with drinking alcohol or eating sugar and not having a great yeah. diet, well, that's not resilient. Actually, what you're doing is you're using drugs and alcohol to cope. So yeah, that, you know, to acknowledge a day. So every day I acknowledge things like not eating sugar, not having alcohol, going to the gym. I mean, these are, they, they are very simple acknowledgements, but it's not in, it, it's, I think it's that it's not small when you compare actually the source of that action. And the real, because see, not eating sugar or not having a drink of alcohol, for many people, would they go, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. And I go, yeah, it's a big deal. You should bloody acknowledge that because that takes something. It really does take something. And um, I know that when I have a lot of people say to me, oh, are you, are you training again? Or, and, and I haven't been training for a while because I tell you something that's thrown a bit of a spanner in the works of <laughs> resilience is menopause. And it's like, what the hell's happening oh. to my body? here um just yes. like oh but, but joints hurt and things like that that didn't before right yeah. and um and, but you know a lot of people who, who don't train for things and I'm not an Olympic athlete but I have done these things that are really important to me and um you know just taking the time and saying no I, I can't eat that now and goodness knows I'm a food lover um but no I I, I am getting up and doing um my 20 kilometer run rather than no I won't be at dinner tonight because I've got this and I've also got work uh, and that and that is part of my resilience but coming back to the you know the, the these definitions of resilience that we can have and it is it was just get up and move on and that was one of the reasons since I was a great adventure racer as I could go hundreds, no, not hundreds, I could go tens of kilometres with a stone in my shoe and not bother anybody, not stop to pull it out. And that was when I started defining, um, redefining resilience differently because there was something in it which was just stoic and not taking care of my own needs, which were actually fine. There was not bothering anybody. There was just shutting up, um, getting, getting up and keeping going. And I find that that definition of resilience led to a struggle cycle um, and I and I see that happen a lot in women and, and the world over we pick up we hold on our shoulders and we keep going and we deal with so much but then we create that as an identity for ourselves and I was reading something if you don't mind me reading that I really I really I saw this on um, Instagram and thought of you and I really like just just what the the girl said about this as well. Hang on, won't be a sec. It was about her saying, I'm sick of this being resilience. Oh, I dream of never being called resilient again in my life. And I'll say who she is. It's um, Zan, Zander She. I dream of never being called resilient again in my life. I'm exhausted by strength. I want support. I want softness. I want ease. I want to be amongst kin, not patted on the back for how well I take a hit or for how many. And I think this is the redefinition of, of resilience um, that I that is important to bring in as well. It's like there's a phrase that says, water always finds its way. And with water, there are so many different ways that water can be to find its way. And it's not always bashing up against the rocks. Mm, yeah. And so that, that to me is, yeah. Such yeah, it's great. I, I mean immediately drawn to there being a softness about it you know rather than a very harsh robust kind of you know hard approach about it yeah 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 and I think that we need to bring that into leadership as well mm. um that there is nothing wrong with softness softness is not weakness softness is um recognizing that there are moments we need rest there are moments that um, that self-care, like you were saying, there can be a hardness and uh, or not a hardness, a determination in deciding I don't eat sugar. I choose not to eat sugar, which is not what I've chosen. <laughs> but you know, it's it's a choice, and there's a not a rigidity. There is a there is a there's a choice in it. You know, there's a, there's a determination and a, and a devotion in that as well. And then there is the softness of I need sleep right now, and it doesn't matter 
what time it is or whatever, this is, this is, this is what my body needs and it's not a weakness. Or um, I need time with my children. Or I need to take time off and get away for the weekend. And one of the best things I ever did when I was going through a difficult um, stage in my own life was just say, that's it. I, I am creating the time off on my own, away. <laughs> Um, you know, that was with a young family and, and my own business. And I know you did something similar as well recently was just, I'm creating the time off from taking a break. How many of us don't saying I'm resilient, I'm going to bounce back. And it's the taking the break that creates the resilience. Rest day is a training day. Oh gosh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> get, a, get off that roller coaster just for a little bit, just to pause. Yeah. Get off the roller coaster, be kind. Um, there's kindness that needs to be brought back into leadership as well. Kindness, not um, not making excuses, not um, you know, that, not that um, when kindness slips into niceness and kindness slips into um, making excuses and and you know, like, like no boundaries, but just pure kindness. Mm. Um, pure what is needed right now. Yeah, so just given the comeback that we're getting to on leadership, there is, um, uh, you know, when we end the podcast, I do get, I get, I do get you to complete a statement about leadership specifically. But before I do ask you that, I do want to ask one thing. Given that you do work predominantly, were well, you saying, you know, your passion and you're working with girls and women in leadership? When you do end up working with them, let's take, for example, uh, a scenario where you have worked with an executive leader, for example. So somebody who does sit in that space. When mm -hmm. you kind of step back and look at some of the key things that you end up working with them on, are there, are, are there a certain number of things that are consistent or are there a few things that you would say always end up at the top of the list? Yeah, and, and there are things that um, <laughs> leads me back to what I said in the beginning, in fact. Um, there are things that still surprise me. I, just, just, I think I'll always be surprised by it. Um, one of the things that shows up time and time again is, um, I guess, women not recognising just how much of a leader they are, even in executive positions. They're busy doing a job. It's not that they, it's not that there's a self-effacing, oh, I'm not a leader. It's, it's just a, like a, a, almost a non-recognition of it. They, they are women who are doing a job. They're just doing their job. And then when finally, you know, we, we work on that identity as leader, not as, oh, I'm in a hierarchical position now, because they get that, um, but really owning the depth of the responsibility of leadership. And I don't mean the heaviness of it. I mean the depth of it. And recognizing that, right? Um, uh, uh, oh, I, I, oh, I am the executive. Hang on, <laughs> like really, that. So that might sound really strange, but this has happened systematically. Um, the other thing I, um, the other thing I work on is is with with women executives, and I think it really shows up more at the executive level than anywhere else. Is oh, this is a whole new level, and I'm going to have to take hits. I'm in danger. So there's a sense of there's a sense of danger um, at being at, at being at the higher level. <laughs> you, you being bothered by your phone. <laughs> so here's one of the things about uh, being in the home office while doing this. I, I, yeah. we we are, we are listening on the podcast, I, but I've got my, my daughter knocking yeah. on the front door as as we're here live, folks. Yes, that's right. So please, yes. <laughs> Do you know? Um, do you know? I'm really. I did that on purpose because I also work in my home office, and this happens all the time. And that is one of the things that I think we need to bring in. We have to stop. Of course, there are things to do. Of course, um, you know, we do need um, time for work. But also, we all have families. Uh, all through yeah. the generations, it has yeah. been as if. Oh, we don't we don't have families. We're just this person who comes into work, and I was like, "This is ridiculous," <laughs> <laughs> especially for women. The way things are <laughs> Well, you know, you know what? I've I've just so bizarrely how you mentioned, uh, you know, the being a leader program, right? And I've just, yeah. um, you know, as you know, for many years, uh, on and off, you know, various stages, uh, I've been a senior program leader with Landmark and yeah. led their self expression and leadership programs and communication programs and 
Um, I've just, uh, just put myself into their 12 month team management and leadership, which is their final, it's like their advanced communication. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the thing that's great about it is it's, it beca- it's, it's a good existence structure for me when I'm in the game of growth, because it surrounds mm-hmm. me with people who are in the same conversation. You know, it's like, you would have experienced in being a leader, right? You've got the being a leader people and you've got, and you're yeah. all up the same game kind of thing. And, yeah. uh, you know, just as soon as I notice it, that the knock was on the door and then I'm distracted on the thing, I'd go, oh, okay. So the failure and the lesson to learn was that I did have a thought earlier this morning that I knew that you and I were talking between three and four. And I thought to myself, right, remember to call the kids. Yeah and remind them to go around the back door so that you don't get distracted while you're doing the interview. <laughs> Guess what? I went for a massage today at lunchtime and, oh, yeah, that went completely out of existence. Oops. <laughs> uh, hey, oh, I think that's, that's hilarious and I really get that because it's exactly the same for me. I'm already telling my kids, right, you can go this way, you can't go this way and that. And that. But what you just said is so important as well. That was that was perfect because it led into the other thing I work with um, with women in high, senior positions of leadership and executive leadership is a uh, sense of isolation. Is that right? A sense of being a, a sense of being alone. Yeah, right. And um, and and what is so important and what you just said is that <clears throat> that's why I'm about creating community. And I've always been a loner in how I did things. Um, just in general, and without realizing it, it wasn't part consciously how I worked. It was, it was however, how I was working. And um, so, what what shows up uh, are three things. One is um, a sense of isolation and a sense of danger at moving into in in many um, companies moving into a higher levels. Um, not moving into higher levels, but it's like I, w- I work with recent executives. So they're like, oh, well, this is a whole other world. And they have obviously all of the competency, all of it, all of it. And then there's, oh, my goodness, but it's not the same world I'm in now. So how to find, not how to find yourself, how to, how to create and hold yourself mm-hmm. in an environment where you're all of a sudden feeling like you're in a line of fire mm-hmm. and you're one of few because I'm working with women. So there's that. And the confidence issue, which is what we were talking about in the very beginning. Um, and, and I think that this is a human thing in particular, it shows up in all women. It's Mm. like, I will one day, I will one day get to a place where I will always feel confident at all times and obstacles will not be obstacles. And so that's, that's a great one to work with, (laughs) but I love that. Yeah. Yeah. That's extraordinary. So, um, the, the statement, are you ready? I don't know, but let's <laughs> it me anyway. I might, I might I should, I should, no, that wasn't very fair of me to do that. Of course, you're going to be ready. We've done this whole thing just on the flow. So I'm going to say, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say a few things. And then at the end of it, you're just, your job's just to complete the sentence. Okay. 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 Yeah. A leader is someone who. A leader is someone who understands her impact on future generations and brings other women with her into the fold of leadership great thank you thanks for joining today and it is so great to finally connect with you and really I am really enthralled that we actually got to have this conversation I think it's perfect timing uh the perfect person considering we're on the opposite sides of the world um is there any and and by the way we will put contact details for you in the show notes uh, are you currently uh, leading your own business? What What is the current thing for you? I am. In fact, um, I have, I am, I've just created the Wild Spirit Leadership Club. And the reason I called it the Wild Spirit Leadership Club, and thanks for, um, thanks for asking, Kylie, is that um, I feel that we've been too socialized and too confined. And so I make that bridge between really, you know, bare feet in the earth, wholesome being who I am hanging out in you know in, with, with the elements and um the, all the refined part of the well I know you don't drink but the champagne and the in you know enjoying the stimulation of a, of a, of a corporate atmosphere or um 
or, or a not-for-profit atmosphere, for example. So I bring that together, but really get in contact with our wild spirit without having to go and live your life in a yurt. And um, so I'm bringing a group of women together. I've done one cohort and I've got my next cohort starting either at the end of May when I have enough women in it. And, and it's really about getting fundamentally connected with who you are and creating, I work with women who are creating transformation and change in the world, who mm -hmm. don't accept the um, leadership the way it is, who don't accept the status quo the way it is, and who are um, actively building a new paradigm and, and that's a new leadership paradigm, but also um, working in energy and um, recreating a whole environment paradigm as well, how we relate to the world and leadership. So, um, yeah, Great. that's what fantastic. I'm up to at the moment. That's fantastic. So good that we got a plug for that. So uh, uh, also, uh, what a shame that you're in <laughs> Well, it's not a shame for you. It's like, damn, <laughs> I'm on the wrong side of the world. So Same accent, right, different side of the world. <laughs> exactly right. Um, all right, fantastic. Well, we will then include the um, links to all those places for people to go to check you out and follow you. And of course, if you're if you have been listening live, please make sure um, that you go and follow Angela on LinkedIn, and you no doubt will be able to get all her contact details from from there. If you're in her area, be sure to check out the retreats that she's got coming up. Um, and like I've said to all of you, don't just ring out, you know, call out to me and say hi, um, you know, do connect. Uh, the whole point here is really to connect with people and, you know, make a real difference. And I think isolation is definitely something, Angela, that each and every one of us, uh, you know, experience, whether whether we're in leadership or not. I mean, I, I think it's one of those things that we can often take for granted, you know, the degree to which it helps for that. So thank you for joining and, and for your um, patience while it has taken us so long to finally get here. It has been an absolute delight. Thank you. It has been a delight. Thank you, Kylie. And I really want to go into what you said about connection. I'm all about connection too. Don't, don't wait to reach out. Do a hey-yo. You know, I need something. This is about being of service. So, yeah. And I just, how cool we connected like this with a riff. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. <laughs>